hey everyone, so the first place wasn't quite enough, so we're going back to the quieter place in the sequel. With the introduction to the sequel as a prequel to the first film is pretty much the remaining sequel that we were supposed to get. So part two continues on with the same cast, once again starring Mary Poppins, or in this case, Mary Poppins a cap in your ass. And director John Krasinski, many may recognize him from The Office, so I think that he has a lot of range. Don't hate me, it's okay to have different opinions on movies, unless it's Marvel. What you did was impulsive, capricious, and melodramatic, but it was also wrong. Honestly, from the hype of the first film, I wasn't impressed. It was a good movie, but it was pretty generic. How many times do we have to see that same scenario, which the end of days, you know, again. That being said, though, the directing was very good, and it did make this basic story, you know, a decent one. Let's show you that even though your story is pretty mediocre, if you have a good crew and cast, it pretty much does improve on that, at least. It plays almost like a silent film, and for that, I really enjoy that concept. It's very bold of them to do that. Audiences could think it's really boring and how it's treated with, you know, very little dialogue. It makes you really feel like any amount of noise is deadly. The creature's design isn't anything thrilling or new. They're very similar, in fact, to the Demogorgons from Stranger Things. Honestly, if they had the design of the creatures from Tomorrow War, I would have definitely really enjoyed it more for that because they're a lot more intimidating honestly. The atmosphere is very impressive seeing the um whatever remains of this world really does set up the dangers of these animals and you know it's not as far as it looks but the, the way they're handled brought to life very well with the sound effects and then the camera work. This sequel is definitely a lot more fast-paced with the cinematography and camera work is very impressive as well. Killian Murphy has the worst of luck being the last man on earth from 28 days later and now this so he just might as well give up trying. But with the daughter being deaf it does add a lot of good tension because she can't hear the noises that she makes and she can't hear anything coming towards her. I think it also makes her even more courageous. The middle half is nothing but edge of your seat wanting this family to survive. That was really intense, you know, them having to share the air. I would honestly be more scared being locked in the vault than I would be of the monsters, but whatever. The ending I liked, um, it left you definitely wanting more because it's very abrupt. Definitely feels like there is a third act missing. I'm sure that was intentional for the third film. This sequel definitely set up what it intended to do. That felt organic of this family trying to survive. Compliments the first film and I, that's what a sequel should do. It's not forced like so many sequels that you see or a cash grab. It's organic and corresponding with the first and that's one thing I can't really say about sequels often. This third film might just be what I'm waiting for to complete this third act and this trilogy. Much like The Lord of the Rings, it feels like it's entwined with each other. It's not just there for sequel's sake. Build up from the last, but also correspond with each other. But that's my view for The Quiet Place Part 2. And remember, be quiet. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.